So capacitors and vintage equipment, uh, let's just say they're kind of like batteries and they have a use life. Um, most manufacturers will say that 15 to 20 years is the most you can expect to get out of a, out of a capacitor. So when we're talking about vintage electronics, especially from the early 70s, we're talking about 50-year-old capacitors that are still working. And that's kind of shocking. It's also kind of a testimony to how well this stuff was built and how well these capacitors have held up. A lot of people online, uh, the two different camps, you've got, you've got people that are in this stuff all the time that will say, replace the capacitors. And then you've got the other side of the coin that says, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And um, I'm definitely in the replace as many capacitors as you can, or that makes sense. And here's what I mean by that. You know, if somebody brings in a receiver, you know, a $200 receiver, it doesn't necessarily make sense to put $500 in replacing every single capacitor in that piece of equipment. We as a shop kind of recommend that you replace the power supply and the large filter capacitors, maybe the amplifier capacitors. Um, as in those are, especially the power supply, that's kind of the hub of the unit, that's the heart of it or the engine. That's what's feeding voltages to all the boards in the, in the amplifier receiver. So they're really the most important ones in our opinion. A lot of times these units are coming in working and they have vented caps. They are going bad. They are out of value and the unit is still working. However, they're not going to last forever. The fact that they're vented and still working means that they're probably so far out of value, it's, it's kind of scary at that point that it's working. Our opinion is that, you know, we're not trying to change the sound. All we're trying to do is get the unit to last uh, as long as possible. Because that is one thing that people say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They will say, well, you know, you're going to change the sound of it. And if you think that those capacitors sound the way they did 50 years ago, um... I would say that's insane because there's no way that those capacitors still function the way they did 50 years ago. I don't care if they test good. You know, testing good is one thing. Um, sounding the same is ridiculous. There's just, there's no way. So that, that's a moot point in my opinion. I don't think you're going to be able to hear the difference between capacitors and a power supply. And, and people that say they can, I, I don't know what to tell you, you know. I love how so many people have perfect hearing yet they have no room treatment. They, um, they make these claims that they can hear these micro changes in speaker capacitors and stuff like that and I just, I don't buy it. And uh, so for a reason being that you're going to change the sound is a reason not to change the capacitors in your power supply. I, I'm calling bullshit on that 100%. It's just not real. So, um, you know, the other thing they say is uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, you have to, with capacitors, you have to remove them from the circuit in order to test them. Most capacitors are under a dollar, you know. Besides the large filter capacitors, these guys, you know, um, capacitors are cheap. It's the labor to change them out. So if you're going to remove a capacitor from the circuit and put it on a tester and then put a 75 cent capacitor back in because it tested good, uh, I don't understand the logic in that at all. I would put a brand new capacitor in. That's why we don't even test them. We either change them or we don't. You know, even these big filter capacitors, this is out of a 1250, this is a vented capacitor out of a 1250. That's what that is. That's electrolytic all right here. And that is a vented 
capacitor and this was a working unit. So for the people that say, well, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Um, it's broke, man. This isn't working correctly. Uh, just because that 1250 worked okay, you know, sounded fine. Uh, this is going to cause big problems. Not only that, but how often are you going to test this? So they're 50 year old capacitors. Are you going to take your machine, unhook the speakers, unhook all of your, all, you know, your turntable and everything else, take the unit apart and test these capacitors once every six months? Or when do you just go, I don't want to test these things every six months. I'm just going to change them so they're good for another 50 years. Once again, logic, you know, um, I'm not saying everybody needs to go out there and replace every capacitor in their, in their vintage receiver. I think that's insane. But I do think, you know, if you, if you have a piece that you want to last a long time, um, hit the, hit the key ones, you know, you don't need to spend a fortune, but this vintage electronics, they're, they're already cheap in comparison to what these units would cost if you were to buy them new today. So if you, if you're buying a piece of vintage electronics, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, I would put the money into replacing the power supply and filter capacitors as a minimum. Um, but that's just me. And you know, it'll, there'll be an, another person or two that, that will say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, right after I get done talking. So, um, you know, we had a, a Fisher in here today, just today, uh, Fisher 400. And you're talking, that's a 60 year old, um, a piece of gear that's full of wax and paper capacitors. Several of them are vented and I'll post pictures up. We just saw it this morning. Rob was working on it and that unit is working. But those wax and paper capacitors, some of those have 400 volts going through them. And that is insane because I guarantee it, they are not working as they were intended to. There's no way, it's just impossible. So, you know, if you're going to have a piece of equipment like that in your house and you want it to work for a while, um, you have to have it serviced, whether or not it's working or not. You know, that whole, if it ain't broke, don't fix it um, mentality is, it's just garbage in my opinion. You know, and you could say, well, you know, you change your oil on your car and, and they're like, this isn't a car, you know, and you know, well, the oil's not broken, but I change mine all the time, however many 3,000 miles, whatever it is, you know, because I don't want to repair. And that's what this is. This is just a little preventative maintenance. It's all we're talking about. We're not going to change the sound. Nobody's going to change the sound of your, of your Marantz or your Sansui by changing out the filter or the power supply capacitors. And if you think that's real, if you think you can, um, more power to you, man but I'm just not buying it. So anyway, um, you, you know where I, you know, where my, uh, opinion is on this. I ho hopefully you learned something, you know, um, maybe just another, another side of the coin as to whether or not you should do any kind of preventative maintenance. But, uh, yeah, the, one more thing, you know, uh, to the people out there that say, uh, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. What about the people that live out in the middle of nowhere that don't have a service technician? Or how many, how many of you guys know young service technicians? Most of the guys, including the guys that work here, um, they're older. They're going to be retiring. And we have people come from the five state area to bring equipment here. Um, it's not like people are getting trained for this. So doing or getting the work done now might be a good idea considering it might be really hard to find somebody to do this kind of work in a few years. From somebody that's been trying to hire somebody ever since we opened that can do this type of work, trust me when I say in five, 10 years, it might not be as easy to just find somebody to do this. You might be shipping your receiver across the country to have some work done that could have been prevented by doing a little bit of preventative maintenance now. So. Um, yeah, support your local, uh, electronic shop, give them some business. 
They're not trying to rip you off. None of these technicians are out sailing on yachts. I guarantee it, most likely, they're making less than you are. Most of the guys I know that do this work are retired and they're just trying to make a couple extra bucks and keep their hands busy. And that's, that's the reality of it. So uh, yeah, support them. It's a dying art and they might not be around forever. So I would get the work you need done now uh, before later. So anyway, um, hope you got something out of this. Stick around, we'll do more videos. If you got any ideas, something you'd like to see or a topic you'd like us to handle, let me know. Um, also, um, you know, we're in West Des Moines, Iowa. If you're ever in the area, stop in and um, yep, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and uh, don't forget to click the like, share, subscribe, all that stuff, you know. But anyway, thanks for checking it out. If you agree, if you disagree with me, just let us know. Tell me how stupid it is to change our capacitors in the comments because that helps the channel grow. So absolutely appreciate it. Have a good one.